Hey, so I'm out here on the road and thinking about some songs that Rush have done related to travel, cars, you know, Red Barchetta, Driven, um, there are probably others too. But, um, you know, I wanted to wax poetic a little bit about Alex Lifeson yet again. I did a video a while back, and it's one of my more popular videos on this channel relating to how Alex Lifeson is underrated as a guitarist. And <laughs> yet um, again, we're going to talk about why he's underrated. But, you know, it doesn't really matter in the end, in the long run, whether he's underrated or not. All that matters is if you like the guy, if you like the way he plays, and if it means something to you. You know, for example, Alex Lifeson is my favorite guitarist. He's my favorite. Uh, I'm not saying he's the best guitarist, but he's definitely my favorite. You know, I got some really good guitarists in my top five, and uh, maybe I'll go, I'll talk about that in another video, but Alex Lifeson is definitely up there. So, a little noisy there. I think the reason he's underrated that I don't think I mentioned in the other video is Alex is in a band, or was, I mean, we keep thinking Rush in the present tense, because we kind of can't believe they're, they're not making music anymore, but be that as it may, Alex was in a was in a band where every musician is virtuoso, elite, world class. Uh, you have obviously Neil Peart, considered one of the best drummers of all time. We have Getty Lee, considered one of the bass, best bass players of all time. Alex, he's not always considered one of the best guitar players, and I think part of the reason is that guitar players are a dime a dozen. <laughs> compared to drummers and bass players. If you, if you take a typical rock band, you typically have one drummer and you typically have one bass player. So the gigs are not as plentiful as for a guitarist who you could have one, two, three, four, as many guitars as you want in a band. And you know they could have their own part in the band. So they don't all have to excel. Uh, there's always at least one lead guitarist. Sometimes the, the, a guitarist does both lead and rhythm and you know takes on all sorts of chores, as did Alex, which is a reason why I consider him one of the best because of all of the different things he did in the band to create the space or to fill in the space that uh, as much as three people could fill in, you know, to make up for maybe a four or a five piece band, a la Yes, for example. But, so yeah, so Alex had to do a lot of different things, so he didn't always have time to play lead guitar and be shredding. He had other responsibilities, right? They had to serve the song. And if the songs didn't require shredding, then he wouldn't put it in there because the song doesn't require it. But, you know, sorry. <laughs> and actually, Getty made that comment where um, Alex took took it for the team, basically. And Alex uh, is a deeply creative, uh, original guitar player. He doesn't sound like anyone else. And there's times we've pushed him to sound like someone else, and he just keeps sounding like himself. And that's turned out to be his real strength. He's, you know, to be in a three-piece band and to be a guitarist is a really tall order. And to develop a way that you can be a rhythm player and a soloist at the same time and keep the sound sounding full and, and not, you know, sparse was the challenge for him. And, and he's just developed such an interesting way of of creating chords and fingering and, and sonically experimenting with all his devices to create a, a, a tone for himself. And I think he's a very underrated guitarist in the rock world because so much of what he does is nuanced. Uh, a lot of his, the way a song sounds is because of the way he's colored the sound that takes it out of the obvious, but you know, when you think that it's a three-piece band and he's still able to do that. It shows you the, the kind of depth of his dedication 
to not always be the guy that shouts, look at me, you know? Like, a lot of guitar players are all about look at me, and he's kind of taking one for the team. Uh, so he's a great player and very spontaneous writer, too. He's, I'm very methodical, and I write, I, I compose in a kind of methodical way, whereas he's very spontaneous. Like, he'll come up with something. He won't even realize what he's just played, and I have to say, stop, play that again. That was brilliant. And he'll play it again, and, you know, so that's the kind of player he is. He's very spontaneous. Another thing, too, I want to say is that Alex was in a band of, like I mentioned, Virtuosos. And you could, someone made the comment that each member of the band is the best member in the band. And, you know, you, there's some truth to that. You could consider Neil, he was the best musician in the band because of how good he was on the drums. You can same, say the same thing with Getty. That he was the best musician in the band because of, you know, how how good he was on the bass, and you can say the same thing about Alex. He was the best musician in the band because of how good he was of a guitarist he was. So since each member of the band is the best player in the band, um, they tend to, you know, as a whole they gel so well that they don't stand out too much from the other case in point is that even when Alex is playing lead guitar, you have, when he's playing uh, a solo, you have the other two guys soloing underneath, and they don't even outshine, it's not like they're outshining Alex, like, the best example of this is Free Will, during the, the instrumental breakdown, as I like to call it, where the, all three of them are shredding, I mean, it's a, it's a lead guitar solo, and that's one of his best solos, Alex's. But you, you can hear Neil shredding, doing, you know, his, with his ghost notes and whatnot. And you have Getty on the bass shredding also, uh, and Alex too. So even though they were they were great, I think they all respected each other's space. And you know, they were they were not you know intent on stepping on each other's toes. Even though Alex may have considered that, uh, you know, during the time of the keyboard era he may have thought that the keyboards were stepping on his toes but in any case if you listen to all of those albums in the 80s Alex's guitar work is some of the best of his career it just stands out oddly enough if you go back and listen you know his guitar work is off the charts sensational whether he's like kind of like playing underneath or the solos that he did although you know there were some solos that were pretty good he didn't solo that much but the solos that he did were tasteful as they always are and i think probably the number one reason that alex is not considered one of the best guitar guitarists is because he was very instinctual he was a very instinctual player he played technically but he wasn't about being technical it was about spur of the moment spontaneous and you know, maybe that resulted in some shredding. Maybe that resulted in something atmospheric. Maybe that resulted in just simple riffs that were perfect for the song in that part of the song. Where I would consider Getty to be a more technical musician than Alex. And I would consider Neil to be a more um, deliberate, pinpoint, compositional artist. You have Alex, who was the more spontaneous, creative in that sense, kind of artist. And that's why Rush is so awesome. So yeah, that's my other take. That's another take I have on why possibly Alex uh, seems to be underrated. I don't think that's much, so much an issue anymore because his body of work speaks for, speaks for itself. But in case we needed another reason, I think I just spit it out there. If you like the content of this channel, please like this video and subscribe so that you can keep getting the stuff I'm putting out here. There'll be a lot more videos coming out, of course, and I'll see you in the next video.